All right, questions from the last couple of weeks uh, for 717. First of all, is in heaven will we recognize the people we loved here on earth, like spouses and kids and uh, friends, neighbors, all that kind of stuff? And the answer to that is yes. In heaven, John and his vision of heaven, he recognized individuals. He understood who people were. Uh, in addition to that, the scripture is clear in 1 Thessalonians 4 that Paul says we will be called up together with the Lord and we will be together with the Lord. His emphasis there is on the gathering because in the midst of that he's saying don't weep at funerals like those who don't have hope. You'll see your loved one again. So I think we will recognize each other in heaven. There's a lot of other verses to support that as well. Uh, Lazarus and the rich man, even Lazarus recognized Abraham and he recognized, the rich man even recognized Lazarus and Abraham. And so I think the answer is yes. How? I don't know exactly. The body will be transformed, but a trans transformed body doesn't necessarily mean uh, an unrecognizable body. Remember the disciples saw the resurrected Jesus and still were able to identify him as Jesus. There were times when they didn't see him on the road to Emmaus, but we we're told there that it was more the condition of the heart of the individuals, not the appearance of Jesus that prevented them from seeing him. In other words, their doubt, their inability to see the resurrection of Jesus Christ as a possibility kept them from seeing him as he really was. Uh, and so uh, I would say that we will recognize each other in heaven. And so I think we will still see each other as we really are. Where this gets complicated is if you have, if you lose an infant or you lose someone as a very young age, how will you know them? But I think there's something to the identity of the mind, the, those kinds of things. Will it be also a process of introduction to people we only knew for a moment or people we only knew for a few months? Will we be reconnected to individuals that we haven't seen very often? That kind of thing. And so with that, I think uh, the reconnection with individuals will be based on uh, their appearance some, but then also uh, th there's some aspect of remembering this life that will still take place in heaven. We'll remember good aspects of this life. There's be positive, supportive, encouraging aspects of this life that we'll carry with us. So the short answer is yes, we will recognize each other in heaven and uh, we, we will be caught up in the glory of God as well. We'll see him as infinitely glorious, but part of that is a community and that's why God from the very beginning made Adam and Eve and family. That's why he made a nation of Israel. That's why he made the church is that he doesn't just save us as individuals. He saves us into a community. The community will still exist in heaven. The church will still exist in heaven. Second question is there's a song that talks about God's grace and says, there's a line in there that says, same for the saints and for the sinners. And the question is, is that theologically accurate? Some of the issue there is when you have songs, and you have poetry, you have to uh, uh, delve in a little bit to what the author might intend. First of all, the author doesn't say that the grace of God is given to saints and sinners. He says enough for the saint and for the sinner. I think in that the actual writer is actually being careful with that language. I think what he means by that is the grace of God is more than sufficient to cover everyone in the world, uh, those who are already believers and those who are yet to become believers, and not a suggestion that it's applied to everyone in the world. And that's why he says enough for this whole wide world, the same for the saint and and for the sinner. It's sufficient. Now, it could also mean that the writer is getting at the fact that there are people who view themselves as saintly and those who view themselves as unsaintly, and that the grace of God is enough to cover even the most egregious sinner. And that probably, one of those two ideas is probably what he's getting at. Uh, in the case of that one, you have this idea that, uh, I've said it this way, there's no one so good as to not need the grace of God and no one so evil as to be beyond the grace of God. God. And so given that the writer says enough for this whole wide world, I think he doesn't mean that it is applied to everyone in the whole wide world, but is sufficient to cover everyone in the whole wide world. But on songs, that's always tough. We want to be careful, make sure they're all theologically accurate. And when someone uses something kind of poetic like that, it's a little bit challenging. You have statements in the Psalms like this as well that are very poetic. You so does uh, God really have uh, feathers and wings like a chicken? No, he doesn't. Just because the psalmist says he gathers them like chicks under his wings, that kind of thing. So when poetic language is used, you always have to be careful. And you know it's a uh, kind of some kind of poetic language in songs and so but I think that's what the writers getting at good question and we try to be careful with using theologically accurate uh, language if you ask me if it's true does God's grace cover sins regardless of relationship the answer is no uh, the grace of God covers those who have received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord um, good question and then there was a question about the Lord's Supper can we do it every week uh, and the answer to that is I, I'm always cautious to do the Lord's Supper with theology in other words it's act with knowledge. And so because of that, we couldn't do it every week because uh, the act with the knowledge would be 10, 15 minutes at least of theological explanation. 
And to do that would mean it would be very hard to cover other theological ideas that we need to cover. However, after receiving this question, I did think we haven't done the Lord's Supper quite as often as we should, and so we will do it more often, but I don't see us doing it every single week. So good questions. Uh, you guys have a great week. We will see you on Sunday night.